So in our first example, we will create a JSON file from Java. In the second example, we will going to read it. So let's right click on the source to create a new class. Say create JSON file public static void main. There are a few new things that I'm going to teach you along uh, that are not covered in chapter number 12 of your book, which is about exception handling. There were certain new things that were added in Java 7 and Java 8 about exception handling, try catch block, which I'm going to introduce in this example. So we're going to start out by using a JSON object. So JSON object that comes from the jar file that we have imported. So by default, it will go into error route until you organize your imports. So as soon as you organize your imports, that error will going to go away. Now, I'm creating an object of JSON type, and I'm putting in it, remember the key value pair that I taught you in the internet programming class? All the JSONs are key value pairs. So we're going to create a key called name, and the value will be the name of a person. And then we're going to create another one. And we're going to give it a value as well. So we have created two of them this way. Besides that, you can also create a JSON array. It's like a collection class. So JSON array. also requires an organized import to which you can add, let's say I want to add some courses like Java, JSP, servlets. And now I want to put this array in my JSON object. So I can say object.put, let's call it courses. And to the courses, let's assign the entire list. Now it is complaining about those warnings that it has written or the warnings that it is if you bring your mouse over. It will say, well, you know what? These statements should have been written associated with this stuff. But if you really don't care about and you stop, if you want Eclipse to stop bothering you with those yellow lines, then click on this link which says add at suppress warnings unchecked. So suppress all those warnings which are unchecked. So if you click on that option, it will add the statement right above the main and will suppress all the warnings. Now we will going to learn how the new version of try catch block is written. The new version of try catch block has this parentheses in the line of the try. Where you want to write a statement that you really want to try. If that statement fails, then it should automatically go to catch. Otherwise, it should go and visit the rest of the body. So here, we want to start out with a file writer class in which we would now like to tap into a file called my json dot json this is the file writer class which also wants you to organize your imports
Now we were going to write some catch associated with it, which is an IO exception. which also requires an import. So you've got to organize your imports along writing the code. So in this version of try, as you have noticed, that we write the try block with a starting condition. Now, if that file writer object gets created successfully, then I want to use that file writer object to actually write to that file what? I want to write my object. And before I write it, I want to convert it to a string. So this allows me to take my JSON object and actually convert it to a string. And then I can simply flush it into the file. In case of an error, I can print the stack trace. And just so that you know what object was written out, right outside the try catch block just for your sake of looking at it as to how it created it you can simply print out that object which is a JSON object just so that you know what is written out to the file and how it looks like so now if you click run this will going to show you in the output what output was generated. As you can see over here, the courses was the name of the array, which has these three values. That's a name value array pair, name key. Name and the name of a person, that's another name key, sorry, key value. Then the last one is also a key value pair. 